welcome. My name is Karen Dawn and in today's class I am going to be working on some more interactive art journaling pop-ups. And we're going to start off with a basic collage on our page background and then work on some interactive elements that will pop up off of the page. So let's go down to my desktop and see what kind of supplies that you'll want to gather. You will, of course, want to have an art journal that you're working in. I am working in a watercolor art journal by Strathmore. And I have a variety of supplies here that I may or may not work with today. I have some fluid acrylics in some nice bright colors and I selected these colors because they matched some of the tissue paper napkins that I have also selected. Most of these, if not all of them, I do believe are from the Jane Davenport napkin collection. I also have some papers from the Jane Davenport Whimsical Girls Art Journal. Um, it's not really an art journal. It's like a, it's got a bunch of papers in it that you can use. And there's a lot of different kinds of papers in it. And so I picked out a couple of these that I thought might work well in my page. This one in particular is what I'm thinking of for my pop-up. You'll also want to have a ruler and some other form of paper. Now this is watercolor paper, but it is really more like mixed media paper. It's kids water paper and you can see here that it is 90 pounds. And this is the paper that I'm going to use for my pop-up element. I also have other things like scissors, some glue, a, a stylus that I'm going to be used for scoring the paper, a pencil. These are, a lot of this stuff is kind of like the mechanical things that you're going to need. For I also have some pens, some Q-tips, and a bunch of other little collage papers just because, you know, I may want to use them. <laughs> I am going to start off by putting down some color onto the background of my page. And for this, I'm just going to be using some of my fluid acrylics and a nice big brush and some water. As you can see by the way that these fluid acrylics went down and when I added water to them they really acted a lot like watercolors but the advantage is that they are permanent when dried unlike watercolor which is going to lift up when you add more mediums on top of it and I don't want my color to be lifting up on me. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some tissue papers and do some basic collage on top of this. And the reason why I want to use tissue papers on top of the background that I have painted is because when these get wet they're, they become very transparent. So the colors on the background are going to shine through and it creates a really fun effect of playing. Before you use napkins, you're going to want to peel apart the layers. Napkins usually come in two or three layers and to peel them apart, it can be a little challenging. So what I do is I take a little bit of tape open up my napkin, put a piece of tape on each side of the corner, and then I can easily peel them apart. 
You can, of course, fiddle with the edge and get it apart, but this is like the foolproof way of getting your tissue papers to separate. This tissue paper I've already separated, and you can see I did a little bit of um, stamping on it. So I kind of did a little bit of my own little thing to it. To adhere tissue paper down, you're going to want to use a matte medium. You do not want the gel medium. Gel medium is way too thick. If you do have gel medium, you can try to water it down, but it may, may, it may make your tissue paper too delicate. Matte medium is really the best thing to use for this. see the white parts of the napkins just melted away into the background and became very transparent. have the background of my page collaged and colored and decorated up. Now I'm going to work on the pop-up element for the page. And again, for this part, you may want to watch uh, another video after this one on how to make pop-ups. I also have um, a book by the same author that you'll see in the videos. And I am going to be doing the automatic pull strip in this book. Now, before you try this in your art journal, you may want to do a really simple mock-up of what you're going to be creating. That way you can kind of get your hands into it and, and feel into it a little bit more. I just work that way better. And so here's the mock-up that I created. It has a couple of different pull-up mechanisms. So you can see it lies flat and then it does a little pop-up in here. These are really, really basic and they use what's called an automatic pull strip. I'm just going to do one of these, but I had to play around with a couple of different ones just to make sure I knew what I was doing before I got started. So for this part, I am going to be using this kids watercolor paper. If you have mixed media paper, that will work just as well cardstock will probably work too. That's what I made my, my mock-up out of was cardstock. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off a little strip of this. It does not have to be exact in any way. None of this is actually going to show up except for maybe a part of the little pull strip, but then we're going to cover that up as well. So I'm following along with my directions in my book. I've cut my strip. I'm going to fold it so that it's not quite folded in half. And I, actually, I'm not going to just fold these. I'm actually going to take a stylus and crease these lines. You can fold it back and forth several times to create these creases, or you can use a stylus to do this. So I got my fold in the middle, and now I'm going to create my folds on the end. These are going to be the tabs that get adhered down. And then there's one more little... Nope, I don't want to do that one. Hmm. See, it's a good thing I have my book out. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line down the center just using the width of my ruler. See, we're not actually doing any measurements, so <laughs> no measurements required. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut out a little strip in the middle. Oh, I forgot. There's one more little part because there's more tabs that go in here. Okay, so I'm going to cut out this center strip. This is going to be the pull tab, and I'm going to make it slightly smaller than the line that I drew on there. And then I'm going to want to make this one slightly bigger of a cut. So on this side, I cut inside the lines. On this one, I'm cutting outside of the lines. And I'm cutting a little past the fold crease that I put in there. Okay, so now we have the mechanism completed. And how this is going to work, I'm going to make sure that I get, got my folds in here, is I'm going to fold these. I'm going to fold it up like this. I'm going to fold these tabs under. Okay, this is the tab that's going to pull the mechanism. So when this gets pulled, this is going to go up. But I want to do two more folds on this one. And I'm just eyeballing this. I just want to make sure that this is about the same width as this. Okay. I'm going to give those a little fold too. And that's going to give me my, my height for my pop-up to go on there. So before I glue this down, I'm going to make my the element that I want to pop off the page because this might actually be a little too big. And I really wasn't thinking about that when I made it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. Okay, so now what I want to make sure is that this is going to fit on here. And oh my gosh, I got lucky. It is going to fit. 
I just want to make sure that the base that I'm going to glue this to actually fits on there and it and nothing shows and that is just great because nothing shows yay <laughs> so let's pull back in and this should be a little bit more dry now i actually want to get this even more dry before i start sticking stuff down So now I need to decide where this is going to go on the page. Do I want it to go on this side or do I want it to go on this side? I kind of put my, my things down in there and that might have not been the best, but that's okay. So I can make it go down here. I do need to make sure that this is positioned correctly. So basically the way that this is going to work is the edge of this tab right here you need to line it up with your center fold of your page and then you can figure out where it's going to go up or down so i can either go that way or i can go this way i think i like this direction yeah I like that. Okay, so this is going to go right here. Now, in order to make this blend into the background a little bit, this tab is going to show. So I might want to take this and do some of this background coloring on it. And I can do this either before or after. It might be a little easier to do it if I do it before. And the way this is going to work is this piece right here is actually going to get glued over to this side and I'll show you how that gets done in a minute but right now I'm more concerned with making this so it blends in a little bit so now that I know where it's going to go then I can go ahead and maybe take some of my paints that I used and some of those papers And this isn't actually going to show, but it might peek out, out on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, put some, put a little bit of this color on these edges as well. I know that's going to get glued too. These are going to be on the bottom side and those are going to get glued down. So that should do it. Now I'm ready to adhere this down to the page. I know it's going to go like that. You need to line up that edge of that tab right in the fold. Lie this out flat. And then put glue on these tabs which get folded underneath and glued down. Want to make sure that you haven't glued anything down and that everything's going to work right. So that works just great. Now we're going to fold up this little tab right here. You see that? So I'm going to fold this up. I'm going to put glue on this tab. I 
And then I'm going to close the page. And that is going to glue that tab down in the perfect position. See, I told you, no measuring required. <laughs> Give it a minute for the glue to set. Depending on the type of glue that you're using is going to depend on how long you need it to set for. Okay. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this down. Make sure that I'm not putting it too far down on the edge because I don't want it to stick out. So while that is drying on here, I could go ahead and do a little bit more design work. So I have run into a little bit of a problem with my pull tab and it sort of works, but I think it could be a little stronger. So I'm going to actually take uh, a little piece of watercolor paper and try to glue it to the back side of that. Might be a little challenging to get it in there, but I just don't think that this is strong enough. See, aren't you glad you watched until the very end? <laughs> there we have it. <laughs> and now that I have strengthened up my little pull tab there, I shouldn't have any problems closing it up and opening it up. And I know you can't really see it here on the screen very well, but it does pop up, okay? And you'll just end up with a really nice little moving mechanism like that. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this little video foray into making your art journal pages pop and I hope this has inspired you to create something of your own. Until next time, I will see you later. Bye-bye.